All right. Believe it or not, we are in a worship service. That was, uh, I believe, um, Skillet. Skillet. Yeah, that was... Um... All right. It's good to see everybody tonight. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight and supporting our youth. And um, I'm excited about all that we're going to hear about tonight. I want to start out with 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Paul says, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word and conduct and love and spirit and faith and in purity. And basically what Paul was just telling Timothy there was, Hey, um, don't think that just because you're young, the Lord can't use you. And uh, I believe tonight, while we're going to hear from young people, I believe we're going to learn tonight. I believe we're going to uh, be reminded yet again of how the Lord um, uses young people and, and uh, I know that we're going to be challenged and blessed tonight. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's ask Him to uh, bless our time together this evening. Father, we thank You so much for Your goodness and grace. Lord, I thank You for these young people and just the wonderful time that they had. Lord, I thank You for what You did in their lives. Lord, we pray that that fire will continue and that You will use these young people to make a difference in the world in which you have planted them. And Lord, may we as adults, uh, may we listen. And Lord, may you challenge us to become more committed in our walk with you. So Lord, we pray that tonight everything that we do and say would bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, why don't we uh, just take a, just a moment. Why don't you stand and uh, shake your neighbor's hands. How you do? Still working? They were making fun of me. Well, it looks like everybody's having so much fun, I hate to, hate to put a damper on it. <laughs> but uh, if we would, let's go ahead and turn to 626. I love to tell the story, 626. We had some skill at the youth one we played, but we hadn't had time to learn it yet. So we'll just sing something out of the hymn book. <laughs> we as human. <laughs> I love to tell the story. I know this is 
second i want y'all to uh there's some good pictures in there i didn't put any real incriminating ones i promise <laughs> maybe a couple but not too many bad ones um anyway what, what happens in gatlinburg stays in gatlinburg okay uh, <laughs> now we had a good time like i said this morning uh had a good trip actually the ride was 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 good didn't have any problems with the bus 
on which we were a little worried about that <laughs> before we left. We got the bus. We, you picked it up Friday afternoon or Friday evening almost pretty much um, from out of the shop. Uh, and then we pulled out Saturday morning. So, uh, um, But everything went smooth as far as the ride goes. So thank you all for praying for us. Uh, that was a big thing. Um, I do want to go ahead before I forget say thank you to all the adults that went. <laughs> Um, I didn't notice any bags under any of you guys' eyes, so apparently I didn't do something right this trip. Um, save that for next time. I want to get you sucked in, so you want to go again. But no. uh, Thank you to, to Mark and, and Hugh for driving. Uh, I know that's a lot of work there, um, just driving. That's, that, that'll wear you out, man. I know. Um, but thank you all for doing that. Um, but We'll go ahead and, and, and show, the, uh, show this the little slideshow we got. Um, and then we'll come back after the slideshow, guys. Y'all, y'all head on up here. Um, adults too. Yeah, this is where your real duty comes in. I'll um, get all the adults that went with us to come on up here too after the slideshow with the rest of us. Oh, the Lord, our strength and song, highest praise to Him belongs. Christ the Lord. Our conquering King, your name we raise, your triumph sing, oh praise the Lord.
As you can tell, we had a very special group that <laughs> joined us. Oh, they sell all kinds of stuff in Gatlinburg, <laughs> including Looney Tunes masks. Um, we had a Batman crisis too. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't sure who the real Batman was. Oh, um, but anyway, we had a good time, as you saw. Um, if you have any questions, just save them for later on. <laughs> uh, uh, we, but we did enjoy ourselves uh, the, the first day. Sunday morning, we got up and went to Ober Gatlinburg, and that's where you saw us doing the snow tubing and all, um, and that was pretty fun. That was, it was a little icy because it had kind of misted a little bit on our way up there. Um, that made it extra slick, uh, so that was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, we ended up with wet behinds. Uh, most of us did, not all of us. Uh, so you can imagine being in the cold air and having a, a wet end. Uh, that wasn't the most enjoyable experience, but I still went four or five times. So <laughs> that was pretty fun. Um, uh, and then we went to the, the, the whole conference, the way it was set up is you, you went in and they had music. There was over, let's say 6,000 people there. Is that what they said? Over 6,000 people there and over uh, like 300 and something churches represented at this thing. So there was a lot of people there, as you can imagine. Um, and it was a lot of fun, uh, but they had bands come and play. We heard Skillet, as y'all kind of heard uh, to start with, but on, we heard it on a much louder scale, if you can imagine that. Um, it was the kind of, you ever heard music moves people? Well, that music literally moved you. Uh, whenever they got up there, you felt it. Uh, you were vibrating along with it, but it was a lot of fun and stuff. But uh, had some really awesome preachers there. Um, got to preach to these guys, and I really enjoyed that more than the music. I usually do. Uh, but that's just that's me sometimes. But anyway, um, had a really good time. Ate pretty good, didn't we? Yeah, I fed y'all all right. Um, they had they made me walk to McDonald's. Can y'all believe that? I had to walk like a mile in the rain to go get on McDonald's. Uphill both ways, seriously. <laughs> oh, but it was worth it. It was worth it. And then we had donuts the other two mornings. I think they liked them a little bit more than the, than the McDonald's. But anyway, I'm going to let them go ahead and share. I'm going to share at the end. Um, but any of you guys, just anything that stood out to you, <laughs> I can't take them seriously like that. Um, but anything that stood out to you on the trip, uh, you know, just any, any little quip. I mean, even if it was just something real quick, you can say just a quick sentence if you want to. Um, but anything that stood out to any of you guys, all adults included, um, if y'all want to share real quick, and then I'll, uh, I'll share at the end and kind of kind of wrap it up with y'all. One um, theme of um, the conference was um, hide his word in your heart. And that kind of spoke to all of us, I think, because he, the speaker asked everybody to stand up and okay <laughs> Woo, so, wait a minute. okay um <laughs> and he, okay there's so many everybody wants to talk about something you shut mine down okay so i like that part hide your word in my heart and rally will tell you about it later Everybody crowded around because there were 6,000 people with little ears sticking up. So if they didn't come in, they did something else. Uh, it's okay. I don't really know what to talk about, so I'll just talk about my favorite part. Um, my favorite part was session one, which was Sunday night. Sunday night. And I really thought I was going to like the music the best, but I wound up liking the speaker the first night the best. He was really funny, and he talked about being not just a respectable Christian, but a real Christian. Well, yeah, the masks were fun, but um, what probably spoke to me was that we needed to hide the Word of God more in our heart and read the Bible more and learn about it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what 
God spoke to me the most about on this trip is, I know I consider myself a good Christian, but I go to church, but I don't speak about it enough, and I don't show it enough. And I don't read my Bible hardly at all. But this trip really made me realize that even though that I think that um, people are going to persecute me or make fun of me because I want to be not a Christian, but a disciple, but this trip has made me realize that I shouldn't be ashamed of what I want to be and what God wants me to be. Uh, God just told me that I needed to rededicate my life to him and uh, read the Bible more and pray more and uh, just everything. favorite part about the trip was basically just getting to spend time with all the youth group and learning more about God and just reassuring my bond with God was real. Thank you. Okay, so we just had some favorite parts and it was that they had a positive environment there a good learning environment and the music was good and I like spending time with all my friends. I hope Bradley goes into detail on what Kelly wanted to talk about and on what and on what I wanted to talk about. It must be the God's theme of choice but and, and all the kids have mentioned it too. But, can I just say one tidbit? The speaker, in my, the one I'm thinking about that talked about reading your Bible every day, I'll let Bradley tell the details, but what I thought about it later after he spoke is sometimes it's not so much what is said as who is saying it. The speaker was an ex-Muslim. Now you think about how dedicated they are to learning what's in their Bible, so to speak. I'll just say that and Bradley can tell you what he said. It was it was good. It was it shook you up a little bit and made you say, Yeah, if this guy's up there saying that and he came from that side, yeah, we better know what's in our Bible. <laughs> okay, as the, the fifth and final Looney Tune, I guess my favorite, um, or God spoke to me about that we need to um, read and memorize our Bible more because we're getting closer and closer every day to not even being allowed to own a Bible. So we just need to memorize that and keep it in our heart. One of the things that I found quite interesting is, you know, we had a lot of great speakers. But the singers and the groups that were up there, you know, God uses the power of music to work through a lot of people's problems. And, you know, one of the, the singers, I didn't know this, like uh, Jamie Gray, she, she suffers from Tourette syndrome. And so he took something that was bothering her and I think some other emotional issues that she had and uh, the lead singer from, um, King and Country, for King and Country, and I think even Building 429, they all had a lot of issues like that. So God could take the things that bothered them the most and could turn it into something real positive, and they could take that and spread their word and all through the music. So I thought that was a, a neat, interesting uh, fact that all these guys had. learn more on a personal level. Uh, we know for a fact that that was not Hannah's little cup of tea when it comes to music. <laughs> I think she had the least amount of fun when it comes to the concert part, but I believe Glenn and I got just as much if not more out of it than the youth did, but the great thing was personal relationships and getting to know the personalities these guys have was just amazing. <laughs> and 
moved in. Glenn and I had some personal issues while we were gone and being stuck in a vehicle with two people for 600 miles. Uh, Maria and you were lifesavers in that also and have become better friends of ours than just church associates. And I think uh, as a church, we should be uh, proud, very proud of these guys and how they represented us outside of our community. They were uh, fine young gentlemen and ladies. I think I might have got blessed more than anybody. I, I had a great time. I wasn't responsible for nothing but the bus. <laughs> but uh, I think that uh, he was, uh, went and saved the place in the line for about three hours so we could sit close to the front on third day. And uh, I liked third day, but I liked his testimony the best. And, and I don't know if anybody else heard that part, but. He basically was thanking the adults that came to make it possible for the kids to come because, you know, without chaperones, people won't let you take kids off. But uh, he was talking about how that he grew up in church life and the adults in the church that kind of took he and his friends under their wings and how important it was to him and how it molded him into the man that he is now. And they've been singing for a long time. And uh, it's kind of strange because I'm kind of in the middle. I'm... I'm technically a senior adult, but uh, I, I got to be with the youth and they think I'm the old man. And when I talk to the senior adults about being old, they could call me a young whippersnapper. <laughs> but uh, getting to work with both age groups, you, you recognize how similar we are. Uh, all we are is just people that need to be loved and, and want somebody to care. The, the, uh, the teenager that does the most stuff that sometimes can aggravate you. The reason they're doing it is because they want to be noticed. They want, they want somebody to love them and to care about them. And the same thing with the senior adults. So uh, we've got some great teenagers and we've got some great senior adults and I think they need to adopt one another. <laughs> but uh, th this is a wonderful church and uh, you do have an opportunity to, I, I kind of like the way that we're doing now where the teenagers eat, uh, supper with us and instead of going up to the youth room. I didn't even really know who the teenagers were. <laughs> There's only a few that I knew who were. And uh, I want to encourage you to, to take some time because these are, uh, we've been kidding some about the, the mask and stuff, but we've got some really, we've got some kids with a, a lot of character <laughs> that's neat to know if you ever get to be around them. So I just want to encourage you to try to spend some time with these young people. You never know, you might be they might be the one that's singing on stage uh, 20 years from now saying that, yep, the folks in my church really took me under their wing and helped mold me into what I am today. That's really what the church is about. It's not any one age group. It's all of us together. And uh, this is a wonderful church, and, and I thank you for letting me get to go. I had stuff I wanted to say, so if you don't say everything, <laughs> yeah, me and Kelly's coming back on I think my favorite part was just getting to see some of our own youth um, rededicate their lives to God. Um, my favorite part was getting to go snow tubing. That was really fun and getting to have snowball fights with some of my brothers. But. But um, what I really learned was that just because you go to church it doesn't mean that you're a Christian. You have to accept Jesus into your heart and read the Bible.
turned out better than I thought it would. <laughs> Actually, more of y'all spoke up than I, than I thought. Some of y'all really shocked me, to be honest with you. Um, so, uh, in light of everything, I will share about what David Nasser had to say about uh, reading the Word. Um, that was one thing that really just it spoke to me, especially. Um, just a real eye-opener. Um, but I want to read real quick from Psalm 119, starting in verse 9. Or actually, starting in verse 20, uh, 25, sorry. Starting in verse 25. Psalm 119, starting in verse 25, says this. It says, My soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. When I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. And I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your rules before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes and I will keep it to the end. Um, you know, one of the things that, that he really uh, used that just was a real eye-opener, and uh, I'll let you guys do it. Y'all, y'all can be our guinea pigs here at church. Uh, um, if you've been saved for four years or more, just go ahead and stand up. Just a real quick exercise. If you've been saved for four years or more, four years or more, okay, now think about this. Think about how many years you've been a Christian. How many years you've been saved. Uh, now for all of those years, whether it be four years, 20 years, 40 plus years. How many of y'all have been saved more than 40 years? Yeah, there's a lot of people here. That's awesome. Okay. Stay standing if you can recite a verse for every year that you've been saved. <laughs> that's what he that's what he told them too and a lot of people sat down after that but here that's that's the eye opener right now I had to sit down too um, to think I could probably recite enough verses but I wasn't sure about it um, and that's the eye opener and you got to think a lot of our churches are in that same boat a lot of our Christians are in that same boat because think about it 40 years, that's, that's just 40 verses. That's not a lot compared to how many are in here. Uh, that's not a lot. Uh, but it's, it's, it was a real eye-opener just to think that, hey, man, I don't know a lot of Scripture. I don't memorize it. Because the thing is, and I talked with our youth this morning. I told them while we were up there that when we got back, I was going to find a Bible reading plan for them, something to, you know, a daily thing to do. And then we talk about it on Sundays or Wednesdays whenever we got together. Because um, the thing is, just like one of the guys has already said, you know, there, there's so many countries around the world today that you cannot walk around with your Bible. You can't even talk about it. If you do, you're liable to get locked up, beaten, or, or killed even. Um, it's that bad some places. And, you know, we take this for granted so many times. And a lot of us, we have five, ten plus Bibles sitting at the house. Uh, I talked to talk the guys this morning, probably most of them collecting dust somewhere, right? Uh, we don't even pick them up hardly anymore. Um, and the thing is, this isn't just a, a book full of pages with letters on it. It's more than that. This is God's Word. Literally, it's God's Word. It's God's love letter that he wrote to us for us to read. The thing about it, if you were back in high school or middle school or whatever, if, if a little boy or a little girl wrote you a love letter, what's, what you going to do with that thing? You're going to read it. And then you're probably going to read it again. And you're going to read it again. And you, Some of us probably still have it tucked away in a box somewhere in a drawer at the house. Um, and it was because we treasured it. It was something important to us. Um, but so many times we don't treat God's word like that. You know, we don't treat God's word like a love letter uh, that, he, that he wrote to us. And that's just something that really weighed on my heart that, that David pointed out. That, you know, God's word just isn't important to us. Uh, as important to us as it should be. Um, and it's important for us to, to, to take his word and hide it in our heart like it, like it tells us to. 
uh, and, and to treasure all those things that, that I just read from Psalm 119. That whole chapter is awesome. Um, but almost every time he talks about having a hard time, he talks about getting over that by God's word, by the law, by his statutes. Um, that's what helped him to get through those hard times. And, and that's what God's word is meant for. It's meant to strengthen us and help us to grow, grow stronger and be able to do the things that he's called us to do. Um, so that's just really one big thing, and that was the main thing for the whole uh, conference was to hide God's word in your heart. Um, and that, that's, that was just probably the main thing that stood out to, to most of us, as all of them wanted to share, but I won't let them. Um, is there more? <laughs> I'm sure there is. Um, but like I said, it was really awesome. And that's one thing we're going to work with as, as a youth group. Like I said, we're, we're going to go through God's Word. We're going to study it. We're going to learn to memorize it. Um, and I'm going to make you guys recite it on stage every now and then, okay? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I all kind of quit looking at me then when I said that. Um, but anyway, don't make eye contact. Um, he won't call on me. Uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, it, it, is there more? Oh, yeah, that is one thing. I kind of almost touched on that, didn't I? Um, one of the things David talked about is his wife. She went on a mission trip for three weeks. Yeah, it was a long time, 20-something days. Um, and before she left, she told me, she said, I already knew this before, but I want to tell you this right away because I need to probably kind of freak out about it. But when I'm over there, there's going to be no communication whatsoever. I can't call you. I can't email you. I can't do any of that. And, uh, and so what she did is for those 23 days or however many days she was gone, she wrote him a letter for every single day he was go she was gone uh, for him to open up and read. And she said, whatever you do, don't open up them, don't, don't open them early. You know, save each day for that day. Um, and that's what he did. He opened up the first one, and he said it was, it was awesome. It was great. You know, he loved what it said, what she said to him. Uh, and then the next day was even better, and the next day after that, and soon he realized she didn't say I couldn't go back and read all those again before I opened up my next one. Um, but the thing was, the point was that he treasured those words from his wife, and, and that's how we should treat God's word. We should treasure it. We should want to go back and read that again. Man, what did God say there? What, what was God speaking to me there? Um, and that's what we really should do is treasure his word in our hearts, not just treat it like another book that, you know, when we go home on Sunday night, we set it somewhere, and then uh, next Sunday morning we're hunting it because we don't remember where we put it because we haven't picked it up all week long. Um, you know, we need to pick it up every single day, read it, treasure it, honor it. I mean, that's what it's for. Uh, that's what God wants us to do with it is just use it. So uh, thank you all again. Um, anything else before I get down? Okay, um, it, was, it was an awesome trip, uh, as you can see. I, like I said, I didn't expect some of these guys to talk. <laughs> because if, if you don't know some of them, a lot of them don't talk a lot. Um, but anyway, uh, it was a good trip, a uh, good time. Uh, 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 we hit a deer. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we enjoyed ourselves. I enjoyed just getting to know a lot of them even more than I already knew them, um, getting to spend some time with them like that, um, and just uh, growing as a group. I told them that was one of the things we wanted to do uh, on the trip up there. I told them, don't worry about bringing your iPads, don't worry about bringing your games and all that other stuff. You can bring your phones and that's it, but uh, uh, we had limited use on the phones. They did good with that. I didn't really even have to enforce that rule. Uh, everybody did good with that. Um, we actually talked with one another rather than being on our phones and, and, and listening to music the whole time. Um, we did good. We had fun, right? You guys learned something about somebody you didn't already know? Probably. <laughs> Probably learned some stuff you didn't want to know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I figured. We got real close. Um, not everybody could be here. There's, a, I think, about three more that, 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 weren't, that aren't here. Um, huh? There's three. There's three. We, we got used to counting, <laughs> as you can imagine that. But anyway, thank you guys again. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, keep praying for us. We're, we're planning stuff out for this year as well. Um, looking to do some more fun stuff. We've got D-Now coming up. It's probably the soonest thing um, in February. So uh, y'all be praying for us about that. We're going to be taking part in that with the groups over in Bainbridge. Um, that'll be fun stuff. Got Aaron Keys and Tony Nolan coming to that as well. So.
be praying. <laughs> you want to go? <laughs> he is good. He is good. Anyway, thank y'all. I left you about 10 minutes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, young people. That was a blessing, and I believe we were all challenged tonight. I know I was and uh, was reminded. And, you know, you never know when the youth are going to share. You never know really how to prepare because uh, you never know. Sometimes they may be up there for five minutes and then be done, and then it may go on. So tonight was one of those good nights that, uh, that you shared, and, and, and that, was, uh, that was great. You know, as I was sitting there, I thought, really, there's a challenge for, for both groups, for the youth and then for the rest of us. Um, and I'll start for the rest of us. Um, I want to challenge us to pray for and support our youth. You know, you look at this group right here in the young, couple young people we have in the back. This is the future of First Baptist Church. And so we need to pray and encourage this group. And as far as I'm concerned, I want to see this youth group up here singing again. I don't want this to just be, amen. I don't want this to be, we just do this once a year whenever they go on a youth group or youth outing. Uh, I want on a consistent basis uh, them singing praises to God. Uh, because just as I started the service out, just because you're young doesn't mean that you can't be used by God. You've been gifted, and God, God wants to use you. And so Bradley uh, and Mark, I want to see these young people up here again singing praises to God, being a part of, of the church family, because they are a part of the church family. And so often in churches, what ends up happening is you basically have separate churches. You have the youth, and they're like their own little church. And then you have the rest of the church, and that's not the way God intends for it to be. He wants us to be a body. A body together. And that's why uh, I believe, Mark, you had mentioned the youth coming down on Wednesday. That's why I told her, I said, we want them down there eating with us because they're a part of the body. And so pray for this, this group of young people. Um, you know, I know when I was their, their age and, and thinking about just all the challenges that, that I faced when I was uh, young, it doesn't even compare to what they're facing now. And so pray for them. Pray the Lord will protect them. You know, it, it is stunning. The statistics tell us that over 80%, and that's probably being pretty liberal, 80% of students, when they graduate, they leave the church. Why is that? Because they're not getting discipled. And that's why we go on these trips. Yes, we go to have a good time, but we ultimately go to see these, to, to help these these kids be disciples. So pray for them, encourage them, and support them. So that's the challenge I have for the church. But now the challenge that I have for you young people is, young people, I like seeing you here tonight. But you know what I want to see next Sunday night? I want to see you next Sunday night. You know, in the book of Acts, uh, when, the, when the church was growing, and some of those religious leaders, they were really getting concerned because they saw this group of, that were calling themselves Christians and they were, they were really growing. And, and, and there's a place in the Bible where it says that they went to the high priest and they said, what are we going to do about this? And that spiritually blind high priest said something that was very profound. He said, you know what, if it's truly of God, it'll last. But if it's not of God, it's not going to last. And so the question and the challenge I have for you is a month from now, will you still be able to stand up here tonight and talk about how good God's been to you? And so uh, young people just know that it is so important. Right now, this is your training time. And when you graduate and you go off to college, most of you are probably going to go off to secular universities. And I promise you this, when you get to those secular universities, they're not going to teach you about the Bible. If anything, they're going to try to get you to be convinced that this is not true, that God doesn't even exist, and that we come from pond scum. That's what they're going to try to convince you. The world is filled with lies. And so that's why it's so important that you stay grounded and you stay in the Word and you read and you become part of this, this youth group so that you get discipled. And I know you were joking, Bradley, but this is my challenge to you youth. The next time, the next time you go on a youth trip, here is a requirement. 
You have got to stand before the youth group and you have to recite some passage of Scripture. Alright, so are we okay on that? You can pick the passage and you can even set the parameters, Brother Bradley. But I want these youth to be able to get into the Word and hide it in their hearts. Okay? And so, church, pray for the young people. Young people, stay focused. Don't lose your focus. The enemy's going to want to steal your joy. He's going to throw all kinds of distractions at you and give you all kinds of reasons why you don't need to be at church. Next Sunday night, when we look around, we want to see you here again. Amen, church? Amen. All right. Well, God has been good. He is an awesome God, and I'm excited about what this new year has in store for us. I think the Lord has big plans for us. I really do, and I believe it's already started. And so, uh, would you join with me? I don't, I don't feel led right now to have a formal invitation, uh, but what I would like to do is I'd like for us just to have a time of prayer, uh, just praying for these young people and, and, of course, lifting up our own personal burdens to the Lord. So let's just go uh, to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this trip, uh, Lord, and, and all that we have uh, shared tonight. Lord, I thank you for the memories. Lord, I thank you for how you uh, spoke to these five young men's hearts, four of them rededicating their lives to you, and then one who gave his life to you, Lord. Thank you so much. And then for how you worked individually in each of these lives, Lord, and the testimonies that were shared tonight. Thank you, uh, Lord, for allowing them to go. Lord, we know that the enemy tried to throw some distractions, tried to throw some obstacles to keep them from going. But Lord, we know that you are much bigger than that, and we are so grateful that we serve an awesome God. And so, Lord, as a church, we pray for this young, this, this young group of teenagers, Lord, and our young people here in the church tonight. Lord, we pray for them. As they are under attack, the enemy is wanting to do everything he can to, to captivate their minds and to fill their minds with lies. But, Lord, we know that you are far greater than that. And, Lord, we know that it is us as a, as a church, it is our responsibility to disciple one another, and the youth are part of that. And so, Lord, we pray that you would, you would ground these young people in your word, and, and, and just as Bradley challenged us tonight, that we would all uh, be busy about studying your word, knowing your truth, as there's so much out there that, that contradicts the word of God. And so, Lord, we pray for these young people. We pray, Lord, that you would bless them and use them to be lights as they go to school and, and, and help them uh, to, to resist the temptations that are thrown at them every uh, day. Lord, we thank you for how good of a God you are. We're excited about all that you're going to do here at First Baptist Church in the days to come. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful day that you gave us today. And Lord, we pray that as we leave now, we would understand that each of us are ministers. If we're saved... We are ministers, and it is our responsibility to go out and to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to have eyes for other people. So It is so easy, uh, Lord, for us to be selfish and to stay focused in ourselves. But Lord, we don't want that. We want to be outwardly focused. And so, Lord, I pray that as we leave tonight, we would have eyes for those who need you. And so, Lord, we thank you again for tonight. We thank you for your abundant mercy and grace. We thank you for who you are, the awesome God that you are. Lord, we thank you that we have hope even in the midst of a dark world. We know that the light has come into the world through Jesus Christ. And we praise you for that. Lord, be with us. Bring us back safely on Wednesday where we will once again come and learn about you. We are grateful for your love for us, just as the youth sang earlier. Lord, your, your love is so far beyond our imagination. Lord, we thank you that we can say that we love you because you first loved us. And we ask these things in Christ's name and all God's people said, Amen. All right, God bless you and have a great evening. I got a message. I got a song. No Merrymakers Tuesday. I'm going to wait one more week. Okay. <laughs>